next we will go to the Bojanga, Satta Bojanga, seven factors of enlightenment. So this is one of the important subjects that Buddha told the monks that they need to study, need to practice if they are to attain Dibbana. So they must be, they must be aware whether these factors are arising in the mind or they do not arise in the mind. And if they do not arise in the mind, then they need to cultivate them. So the first one, Sati Bujanga, mindfulness. So mindfulness factor of enlightenment. So without mindfulness, then uh, everything is gone. There's no wholesomeness in the mind. Eh? So mindfulness is very important factor to develop in our meditation. So we constantly try to build up our mindfulness. Eh? What then is this mindfulness? Eh? What is this mindfulness? It's awareness. So sati is the uh, mindful. It is bringing up, uh, bringing up to the mind all those um, wholesome uh, mental states or wholesome mind. If there is no sati, then our mind becomes unwholesome. It is like uh, mm, the the Chinese medi- medicine shop where they use the scale, eh? the uh, left and the right hand side, and they balance it up by putting the weight and the medicine. Now the same way, when uh, when sati goes up, eh? then the defilements goes down. So in other words, the defilements cannot arise when there is sati in the mind. There's mindfulness. Mindfulness means that uh, when we are doing dana, dana is giving charity, when we are keeping sila, eh? it's now when you are listening to the chanting, sharing of merits, now all these things, the sati arises, or in your meditation, when you are doing rising and falling. So when there is this sati arises, the mind becomes wholesome, and therefore the defilements cannot arise. But if the sati is absent, if you can't maintain the mindfulness, if the energy is weakened, and then the sati falls down. Now when the sati falls down, then the defilements go up. So what is this defilement going up in our mind? We have a lot of all those uh, anger, frustration, uh, disappointment, sadness or grieving with all these mental states or ignorance, eh? moha. So maybe they go up because sati is absent. Eh? Mindfulness goes down, then defilements goes up. And uh, only when you have the mindfulness, then you realize, eh? oh, my mind now is full of greed, or my mind is full of hatred or anger or frustration. When the mindfulness arises, then it sees the past object, those mind that has past, and it take it as an object, and then the mindfulness knows, oh, my mind, my mind is disturbed, my mind is not at peace, my mind is full of dissatisfaction, and then uh, without sati, without mindfulness, then there is this no knowing. So a person who do not meditate just live. Alive, eh? just live alive by mere conditioning of the thoughts. The thought just arise and fall, rise and fall. Sometimes a lot of unwholesome uh, mind arises and they suffer. Eh? The burning of defilements, we call it. So one of the suffering of the mind is the burning of defilements. When the mind arises with defilements, with sadness, with hatred, with anger, then we experience a lot of mental pain. So people, those who do not meditate, those who do not bring out the mindfulness, will suffer a lot of mental pain, eh? a lot of disturbances, because there will be no peace of mind, there will be no stability when there is the absence of mindfulness. So sati is very important to develop. When sati is developed and becomes strong, then we have a lot of wholesome mind. Then arises a lot of wholesome mental states like compassion, like loving kindness, like equanimity, like many other 
wholesome mental states like faith that arises in the mind or giving, eh? charity or helping others, uh, something like that. So mindfulness associates those who do a lot of charity. Eh? So constantly the mindfulness arises, reminding them to do charity or those who keep sila, the precepts, mindfulness arises, constantly re- reminding them to keep precepts. Like, okay, I'm not killing, I'm not stealing, eh? I'm not lying. So I keep my precepts of Musawada, eh? must not use harsh language. So it's the mindfulness that, that brings out these mental states. If absence of mindfulness, then, then there'll be a lot of breaking of precepts. And they'll be killing. They're not worried if they kill because there's no mindfulness. No worry if they steal because there's no mindfulness. They're not disturbed when they lie, when they cheat, when they use harsh language because there's no mindfulness. So even though one takes intoxicants or drugs, there's no mindfulness. Mindfulness will remind the mind that I will abstain. Eh? I will abstain from harsh speech. I will abstain from breaking the precept. Now that is mindfulness arising connected to taking of precepts. Now there is this mindfulness which is most important that we develop in meditation. eh? The mindfulness of awareness of the mind, body, feelings and the Dhamma. That is the most important mindfulness that we watch the rise and fall and we try to maintain the mindfulness. Try to make it strong. Only when mindfulness becomes strong, then concentration develops and we could see things as they really are. And then there is this realization uh, or insight. So mindfulness, sati, become first in the seven factors of enlightenment. The meditator becomes aware that he possesses mindfulness. The meditator becomes aware that he does not possess his mindfulness. So that is the second way of knowing contemplation. The third way is the meditator explore how he should cultivate mindfulness that is not there. The fourth, the meditator should train himself to cultivate mindfulness. And when it has a reason to maintain it and make it strong, now, these are the four ways taught by the Buddha eh, to know the mindfulness in these four ways, to know when it is there. Now, there are times when we know our mindfulness are strong. Eh? We know that there is mindfulness. Then you feel a sense of peacefulness. And sometimes, even then, the mind will have joy when the sati is there. Mindfulness is there, mind is wholesome, and become peaceful, contented, and there could even be joy. When mindfulness is absence, a meditator then knows. Now how does a meditator knows when the mind is filled with disturbances, when there's a lot of unwholesome states of mind, when you get angry, frustrated, you become very sad or you feel lonely and depressed, you know that mindfulness is absence. But a meditator should know, knowing, knowing, knowing. Meditate, the mindfulness is absence or the mindfulness is weak. So you should observe the mindfulness in your mind, right? Whether it is there or it is not there. If it is not there, then the mind becomes unwholesome. Mind can only be wholesome when there is mindfulness because mindfulness brings out the wholesome states of mind. It just brings it out, bring out the respect, brings out the giving mind, gives out the kindness, loving kindness, or brings out the compassion. It just brings it out. When you see somebody is sick, then you feel compassion arises. Now how does compassion arises? Because of the sati. Because of the mindfulness brings out the compassionate mind because you see the other person is suffering and in pain, eh, in sickness. So, I'll go into a bit of the Abhidhamma aspects of the explanation on sati. Eh? So, sati is to bring out the wholesome mind. 
eh, bring out and you remember and say, okay, I will do dana or sila, keep precepts eh, or time to meditate, right or not. Eh? So there is the mindfulness and says, it's time to meditate. It's that mindfulness and it's function. What is the function of mindfulness? It is not confusion. Become aware of the object. So the mind is not confused. Yeah? Mind is aware of the object. When you are giving, when you are aware you are giving, when you are aware that you are meditating, you are not confused. You know your mind is restless, it's running away. Then you bring it back, rising, falling. When you see the body feeling there is pain, then you watch pain. It is not confused. It knows exactly what to do. Mindfulness is to take note of the meditation object. And it's manifested huh? as guardianship of the mind. It manifests as when mindfulness is strong, it prevents the unwholesome mind from arising. So it guards the mind. Whenever there is mindfulness, defilements cannot enter the mind. It's act like a protection. Uh, for the mind, when there's mindfulness, you won't get angry, you know. Uh, knowing, 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 hearing, hearing, anger, anger, you know. When mindfulness arises, you won't get angry, because you know. When you're sad, then you know. I'm sad, sad, sad. Then you detach from the sadness. So mindfulness guard the mind from going, from producing strong defilements or getting more deeper into suffering. So that is the manifestation of mindfulness. So when you have mindfulness, then you know, eh? you are protected. So what is the presence of mindfulness? Eh? Presence of mind, attentiveness, not forgetfulness. When there is sati, the mind attends to the object, whether it's a meditation object or it attends to the dana, sila or other objects. It attends, eh? attends to. And the proximate cause is the perception of the four foundation of mindfulness. Now, what is the, the cause for its arising? What is the cause for the strong mindfulness? Is to constantly put your mind to the meditation objects. It goes away, then goes to the feeling, watch the feeling. It goes to the mind, watch the mind. You can't see the mind. There's no feeling. Then go to the body element. Walking, sitting, lying down or body movements. Now, if you constantly attend to the meditation object, sanya, perceive the meditation object, then mindfulness develop. Eh? Mindfulness develop. The third factor is, now how do we promote, how do we bring about strong mindfulness? There are four factors eh, to consider. One is, is mindfulness present or is mindfulness absence? So you need to Watch the mind, see whether it is there. If it is not there, how do we promote the mindfulness? Eh? So, there are conditions eh, for it to arise. Now, the practice of mindfulness with clear comprehension. Now, that would promote mindfulness. In other words, with clear comprehension. Clearly, when you do an action, put your mind there. Sweeping, sweeping, cleaning, cleaning, or bathing, bathing, or walking, walking, lifting, pushing, lifting, pushing. Clearly comprehending what you are doing. Mindfulness becomes strong. The second way is avoiding person. Eh? Avoiding those with a very confused mind. Eh? People who are not developing mindfulness. So, so they may influence you. Uh, not to meditate. They will talk a lot of things that will pull you away from meditation. So this is one of the ways that we would not mm, sort of uh, lower our guard, huh? that we are being pulled towards something uh, unwholesome, that are, they make our mindfulness weak, weaken our mindfulness. Huh? Or put people who are very hostile. So just don't quarrel with them. All right? Sometimes strangers, they are very fierce. Eh? You walk along the road and uh, mm, even uh, mm, they try to cut in front of you, left and right, and things like that. And they horn you. 
There are people who are hostile, so just leave them alone. Don't get involved with them, all right? There are people who are hostile, so you just leave them alone. Sometimes your colleague eh, who is very hostile, so just try to be nice to them, just ignore them. Don't, don't fight back. You do that, then your mind develops a lot of hostility. You become very angry, you plan for revenge, and you can't work, you become very disturbed. So just forget about it. Eh? Just think to yourself, what you do is your karma. What he do is his karma. So knowing, 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 just ignore them. Eh? That is the best you can do. Just ignore them. Eh? If you can't do other things else, of course you can do other things else as well. Associating with persons who are mindful, of course. Eh? Example like if you come to the meditation class. So it is good because uh, when you come, at least you have an hour of meditation. Eh? If you don't come, then you don't even have an hour of meditation. Eh? If you Sometimes there are those who miss the class for whole, one whole month and yet they don't meditate for one whole month uh, by their own. So to mix with meditators in the sense that you come when everybody is sitting in meditation. So that will induce, promote your mindfulness, even though it's just once a week. But at least you have an, a solid hour of bringing out, developing your mindfulness. Inclination of one's mind towards the development. Eh? That means to say strong intention. Eh? Intention to develop the mindfulness. So, if you have strong intention, then you set aside a certain time when you are free once a day, even for five minutes, ten or fifteen minutes, just sit there and just watch to steal your mind. Eh? It is important to steal our mind. If our mind keep on talking all the time, then uh, we just build up a lot of concepts. Concepts produce more concepts. The mind keep on thinking non-stop. Keeps on thinking and thinking and thinking. But if you just sit there and steal your mind, just bring out your mindfulness, detach from your mental object, just sit there alone, quietly and watch. Thinking, thinking, thinking. What are you thinking? Just name it. Name what you're thinking. You're thinking about work, thinking about friends, thinking about business, thinking about your loved ones, or thinking about what? Just name it. If you keep on naming it, Without increasing the thoughts. If you hold on to a thought, then produce more thoughts. But if you don't hold on to the thoughts, just by naming it and detach, then it arise and subside, arise and subside. And if you do that for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and uh, mindfulness becomes strong, then the thoughts slow down. Then you have less and less thoughts. When you have less and less thoughts, if you have peaceful thoughts, wholesome thoughts, then uh, you feel a sense of calmness. You feel very peaceful and calm. In other words, the mindfulness has become strong and it has developed concentration. Eh? So when the mindfulness is strong, concentration develops. So you need to strengthen your mindfulness, right? For the realization, if mindfulness is weak, if you do not strengthen your mindfulness, if it is weak, therefore the unwholesome mind becomes strong. Absence of mindfulness, then the unwholesome mind becomes very strong. When unwholesome mind becomes strong, there will be no peace. No peace, there will be no concentration. You can't see things as they really are. Only when the mind is peaceful and we can see things as they really are. The things in life, they are not substantiate. Why? They are anatta because they are always changing. Once you hold on to it, it disappears. It is no longer there. Whatever thing you hold on to your mind or to your feelings, to your body, to your dhamma, eh, it disappears. Every time you hold on to it, it disappears. It likes grasping on to a shadow because it is changing. Therefore, it is not substantiate. And if you cling to it, then it brings a lot of fear worries and disturbances, the fear of losing what you have, something precious, something dear. So once you hold on to it, there comes a lot of fear, right? Fear of losing. So, so this is the first factors, eh? 
bujangga, the first factors of mindfulness, and the four things. Watch your mind if mindfulness is there or it is not there. Then the third one is try to bring out the mindfulness. The fourth one is to try to maintain the mindfulness, try to make it strong so that it will help the other bujangga to be strong. If mindfulness is not strong, all the other bujangga becomes weakened. They cannot be strong. So it helps to strengthen the other factors of enlightenment. Okay? So I'll stop here for tonight. Any question? One or two questions before we end the session. Is it clear or not? So the Dharma no Pasana, eh? we have finished the hindrances. So you need to know the hindrances. If you don't know the hindrances, when they arise, they become strong. Then you find your meditation is very sluggish. Hard to, hard to make your concentration strong. Every time you meditate, it goes away. become restless. There's a lot of remorse, a lot of thinking, a lot of grieving or tiredness, or sleepiness, or doubts. In other words, you need to note it, and let it go. And you've got to build up eh? uh, your concentration, so the hindrances become weakened. Now, we go into now the development of these factors, which are very important. Eh? Strengthen your mind, and the factors that are essential for you to penetrate, to develop wisdom, insight. So, Dhammanupasana uh, is equally important to practice as the other three. Watch mind, watch feeling, watch body. Okay? So, any question tonight?